This is Steve, the cookout coach, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How's it going? <laughs> you have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what, what, what seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the, in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate two feet for wiener. Oh, listen, Laverne, you shit the face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. All right, welcome back to the second hour of the Barbecue Central Show. We are here in the second hour. The show originating from... Palm City, USA. Cleveland. We do it live every Tuesday from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern. First hour of the show goes out on podcast on Wednesdays. Second hour on Thursdays. I'll tell you about Friday here in a second. Still to come on this show this evening, Sam the Cooking Guy joins us. In about 13 minutes from now, Steve Ray will help me close out the show as we talk about Unfinished Beef, the Netflix hot dog eating contest that took place yesterday. We say good evening to those of you watching this show tonight through one of our video streaming platforms. You can go to Facebook.com slash BBQ Central Show or Twitter.com slash BBQ Central Show. Or you can watch on YouTube which is youtube.com slash at BBQ Central Show. And we have a YouTube poll question of the week, and we're asking everybody this. The best part of last Tuesday's show was Maddie, Becky, Steve, or Marley. And currently, Maddie's still in a boat race with the lead at 90%, then 5%, Becky, 5%, Steve, and Willis, zero. (laughs) Shocking. Willis, I'm shocked. Not even 1% of my audience voting for Willis, but that's all right. Maddie certainly had the edge. I thought Becky might be doing a little bit better on the trend for percentage vote, but Maddie carries the show, and that's why she's carrying 90% of the vote here. As we open up the second hour, we'll ask Steve and Sam the Cooking Guy what they think as they roll through the show here this evening. Coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less this coming Friday, episode 349, taking you back to a September 1st of 2010, featuring a long-standing guest of this show, an Emmy Award-winning TV producer, a Barbecue Hall of Famer, a Barbecue Central show's guest Hall of Famer, our pal John Marcus is going to be on Friday. At this point in time, September of 2010, Barbecue TV was at its highest levels. In this segment, we talk about the then second season of Barbecue Pitmasters. If you're unfamiliar, this was the year that the show went from reality show where they were following around the likes of Tuffy Stone and Myron Mixon and Harry Sue and some others two game show and it never switched back after that we talked about the comments he was seeing on social media at that point john said it was his due diligence to read every single comment that was going up about the show on social media and how that plays into future iterations of the show all that fun stuff and i would like to say this first john is a beauty one of my favorite barbecue people ever period full stop And for a myriad of reasons, not the least of which, he is just a great human man. I have been very critical of shows that are game show style shows. But it has taken this long for me to realize that it's easier to continue to do a show in that format, that being game show format, than it is doing any other format. And it took Michael Simon to tell me that for me to realize And to accept it. So I do. I accept it. I understand why they did it. I understand it had sustained success once they did it. 
and I hated every season after they made the switch, but I get it. So if you don't know about John Marcus or you don't know about Barbecue Pitmasters, the TV show, this will be a great show for you to check out this coming Friday, and you do need to be a subscriber to the podcast feed in order to get it, and you could subscribe to the show by visiting thebbqcentralshow.com slash subscribe. And don't forget, if you want to hear a guest or segment again that's been lost in the archives, email John. Let him know you would like to hear. It's our pal John Solberg, J-O-N, John, J-O-N at thebbqcentralshow.com. I missed it last week because I was out, but I want to tie it up here neatly. The Famous Dave's All-Star Barbecue Series wrapped up a few weeks ago, and the last event was in Columbia, Maryland. Winning the last event of the season was Team Meat Coma. And reserving was Miss Pillion Meatworks. You know Miss Pillion Meatworks. Of course you do. Both Team Meat Coma and Miss Pillion Meatworks have earned spots into the 2024 World Food Championships of the Barbecue Division. Aside from taking GC and RGC at the Famous Dave's All-Star Barbecue Series culminating event. So congratulations to both of those teams. And we wish them good luck here in November. Next week, September 10th, we will have a post-mortem on the 2024 series with Mike McLeod from the World Food Championships. We'll also have a look ahead to what the 2024 World Food Championships looks like in current stages as it reloads to Indy this year. Look forward to that. And of course, you can find out all of the past results from the Famous Dave's All-Star Barbecue Series 2024 by visiting the website, worldfoodchampionship.com slash allstars. That's www.worldfoodchampionships.com slash allstars. And you can see all the events. And remember, I think this started all the way back in was it May. We ran all the way through the summer. I remember when we did the first promotion for this, and I was like, this thing runs until the end of August. And I can't believe that's even close. Like, that's far away when we started doing this. But indeed, I was wrong. As usual, 2024 rapidly coming to a close. Certainly no better way to take that to heart than by seeing what has happened. As we're already here through August and stepping into September. Len in New York City writing in through email. Greg, not used to hearing the show without you or hearing it with any sort of co-host. But I really enjoyed the banter between you and Maddie from a few weeks ago. However, you are 100% wrong about Francisco Lindor. He's really good. Actually, a great player who plays hard and is the team's MVP, one of the best current shortstops, and maybe will get some NL MVP votes this year if the Mets get in or close to the playoffs. Regards, Len. Len, you are right about Maddie. However, you are 100% un... You didn't understand what I was saying about Francisco. I wasn't saying that he's a bad player. What I was saying is... He's he. It was better for us to trade him and keep Jose Ramirez. But this is not a sports show, Len. He's he can be a fine player. Your Mets aren't that great. Ever since he landed in New York City, they've blown. This might be their best year ever, and it's really not that good. And previous or subsequent years of Francisco Lindor living there, he's the team has been trash. The team has been wingstop fries, is what I'm saying, if you know what I mean. Terry in Kentucky is back. Terry? That's right, Terry. Terry? Greg, I don't always email in successive weeks, but after hearing you explain yourself in regards to the News Herald story project, might I recommend that your daughter Maddie take over from now on? She is at least... Not nearly as offensive as you can be when giving a hot take. Love the show. Terry. Terry. Thanks for writing in, Terry. Maddie could take over the show. We've realized since last week that there's no reason that I would ever just outright cancel the show, short of having no internet. 
She's certainly capable of sitting in and running 120 minutes, uh, without question, I might add. So appreciate you writing in in successive weeks, Terry, and telling me what a dick I am in successive weeks. Terry. Terry. Sam the Cooking Guy is ready. I feel like it's been six months since I've seen Sam. Before we get to him, I'm here to talk to you about Franklin Barbecue Pits. What you have with the Franklin Pit is a deeply thought out and refined version of the old propane style cooker that Aaron Franklin uses for his restaurant, Franklin Barbecue. Stylistically, it reflects the kind of bare bones industrial handmade aesthetic that he loves. As in the patina, the way the build allows you to see welds and craftsmanship. Franklin Pits, primarily made of 5 sixteenths and quarter inch thick American made steel. Anything that sees heat, engineered to be incredibly solid, should last at least a century or more if cared for properly. The thickness of that steel guarantees professional grade heat retention. That's a critical component in making great barbecue. Every Franklin Pit, unique unto itself, including their own natural markings, and its own badged number. Franklin Pits can be found at barbecue specialty stores across the nation. If you, the listener, are an owner of such a store and you wish to become a certified Franklin Barbecue Pit dealer, visit franklinbbqpits.com and fill out their dealer form. If you, the listener, want to own a Franklin Pit but you live too far away from a certified dealer, you can go to franklinbbqpits.com and purchase a pit online. Franklin Pits will ship a Franklin Pit right to your driveway. It's just as easy as that. So if you're close to the certified dealer, go and see it in person. If you're not close to the dealer and you don't own a store and then subsequently become a certified dealer because you want to have a top-of-the-line offset, believe me, then you can just go right online and go DTC, direct to consumer. It's FranklinBBQPits.com, and we're back with Sam the Cooking Guy. Right after this, stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. This portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet, currently available in three sizes with a host of accessories. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or a professional. Just a cooker you want to add to the arsenal regardless. Visit pitbarrelcooker.com and tell them the Barbecue Central Show sent you. Folks, after what appears to have been damn near a year as September starts, he is back. He is better than ever, and he is bringing 3.75 million YouTube subscribers along with him. My pal, and not yours this time, Sam the Cooking Guy. There he is, Sammy! Wait, why can't I be their friend? It's why always, can't I be their friend? It's pal? always my pal and not theirs. I have to have some type well, of exclusivity I, 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 somewhere. Otherwise, I'm just an everyday ham and egger. Okay, well, listen. I'm going to be honest with you about something. Oh, no. Am I going to be able to take it? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Doug Scheiding and I have been texting a lot in the past uh, oh, dear. few days. I want to hear that. I would say that... I would say that I am a friend of Doug Scheiding. I would say you're probably a a better friend to Doug than I am to you right now. When I text you, now I get emoji replies back. I don't even get any thumbed out words. Oh, stop it. Why don't you go get on Doug's podcast? Oh, that's right. He doesn't have a podcast. Show me one. Show me one. (laughs) Show me one. I don't have my phone down here. Stupid emoji things you claim that I send you get a back thumbed to. Up look, or... Doug's, Doug, Doug's a good. Well, sometimes look, I, like I might be in a situation where that's. I, I could be on my scooter going down to one of the restaurants. Be careful, and, on the and scooter. I, maybe I shouldn't be doing that, but uh, maybe that's all you get. Maybe. But I thought a good friend would understand. No, I'm not a good friend. Okay. You know that. YouTube poll question oh. of the week: The best part Go of ahead. last bring Tuesday's show time. was. Maddie, yes. Becky, Steve, 
or Marley? Is this even a question? Yes. Who was the best? I, I believe Maddie's taking over. All right. 87%. Be 87% of the voting public. Yes. And not that the other ones aren't great. Right. But she was... Uh, Hosting she, is different. She owned it. That's right. Yes. She did, owned it. Did you watch Joey Chestnut and Kobayashi yesterday? No. Really? I don't really, that doesn't really do a whole lot for me. People eating stupid amounts of food. I mean, I didn't, is I, it really, a, is it really, a, 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 I know I yeah. talk about, uh, I know I talk I know, about you've Nathan's. Been, I've talked about nothing but <laughs> this fucking competition forever. I know now. I talk about Jesus, the 4th right. of July one as it builds up yes, like yes, a show or yes. two before. There was a lot of controversy this time around with the banning of Joe Chestnut, of course. But of course. I never watch it. I never watch it live. It's always a highlight because um, I just never remember but? to watch it. Is there, is there a butt coming? Yes. I made reminders in my calendar for yesterday. Oh I had Netflix and? the station remind me. And sure Gosh. as shit, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I was front and center watching one hour of buildup, basically 40 minutes of buildup to get to the actual eating contest at the back end of the hour. Uh, I, I don't even know who won. I Go do. Ahead. You want me to? I'm going to guess. Uh, yeah, I'm going to guess gonna, Joey. Let me ask you yeah. uh, the same question I asked Malcolm. Is there any chance that you're going to watch it? You don't want to get it ruined? No. No. No chance at all. What if I told you Go that ahead. Joey Chestnut ate 76 hot dogs and buns? Would you believe it? Yes. What if I told you that Joey Chestnut ate 80 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes? Would you believe it? What, shouldn't you have given me a Kobayashi number after that? No. Okay, yes. Win. I don't know. Why am I going to doubt that? Right? I mean, look, I, I would have been I would have been Team Joey. Wait. Would you believe me if I told you Joey Chestnut ate 83 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes? Wait, what was your second number? 82? 80. 80. 80, 70, 80. No, I, I don't know what they eat. I don't follow the he fucking did. competition. He ate 83 hot dogs and buns okay. in 10 minutes. So look, yes, yes. That wow. is absolutely amazing. Crazy. On on any on any level. The best sporting event of the weekend. But but for Jesus, really? Yes, better than tennis. And, and what, did, what, did, what did Kobayashi eat? Uh, 68. He even had Seven? one deducted. No, he, did? he was what way, happened? he was way, it was, he's out. It was he's like, fine. he shouldn't come back. It was like one to two in the early, maybe three, but halfway yeah, yeah. through it was towards 10. And then it was no, just a, at a like, relentless pace. Joey it's Chestnut a, it's was ridiculous. ready to go. It was ready to go. There I don't was no care way. how much money he made. $100,000. Wait, he, what, he, wait, what was he making when he was doing it at Nathan's? Uh, I think winning was like twenty grand or something like that. Mm. But but he was hey, also look at Netflix has a shit ton of money. They I only paid him a hundred grand. So I don't know the entire business workings. I know there was a jackpot take of a hundred grand full. Whoever won most amount of hot dogs. Now, okay. could oh, there be look. appearance fees yes, for both of them? Of course. Yes, and then travel course. and whatever Back else. and that yeah, kind the of whole stuff, deal. Yeah. Travel. Yeah. But uh, what do you travel? What do you need? You need a, uh, whatever hotel room you have, you need a giant fucking toilet so you can barf out everything after. <laughs> because there's no oh, way. Joey Chestnut Nobody digests. Wants that. Nobody. Yeah. He, he does. Digests. Sure. He said it on the you show. Watch him digest. And then what happens like the next day? You know what happens. I know what happens if I give Lewis, my chihuahua, something <laughs> odd, a little bit extra. I know what happens the next day. Yeah. Joey Chestnut can say whatever thing he wants. Yes, I digest. But everybody knows what goes in comes out. Hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. If you think Joey Chestnut... Is going to the bathroom like like a regular every day Monday or Saturday after eating eight hundred effing dogs? That's not true, and I don't believe it. 
Oh, no, I'm sure he's... And you can ask my good friend Doug Scheiding, because I'm sure he would know. I'm sure Joey Chestnut goes to the bathroom unlike a normal human. Of course The day after competition. But he's not renting he the food. He digests them. Yeah, he's not, he's not going to vomit the, right after the contest. I don't know that. He says he does. That might be his secret. Are you calling him I a liar? It. I don't know what I believe. All I know, it, yeah, I know if I show. ate. I have it documented. He, he said on what, the show. How many did he ate? What, 82? 83 hot dogs and buns. 83. I know if I ate eight hot dogs, I would have a very hard time of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't. Why are we even talking I, about I this? I'm curious why you have been so fascinated with this. Well, it was bringing. You want to be one it of was these bringing, guys? No, I was bringing back. It was bringing back the two legends, current day legends of hot dog eating. You had the guy that vacated Kobayashi under dark clouds and suspicions, and he everybody thought he was a dickhead. And then uh, he says Joey's a dickhead, and somehow through money they were able to get these two back together and uh, we're doing another segment that. with uh, Steve Ray uh, after after we're done here so we'll break it all down Good. fully interesting what money does yeah. but business brings people together now like were they friendly afterwards did they high five and hug it out or anything like that no uh, they turned back okay, so to wait, each other wait, wait. walked separate ways that was wait, it wait so Joey so so Joey got at, at the minimum a hundred. Yeah, hundred grand. What happens next year? Because Kobayashi, I don't not, know. he's not even in the race. He said he was nobody it. that can. He said that was it for him. That was his last to eat. Of course it was. Yeah. So I don't know where he goes from here. I don't know. Look, you get smoked that bad. So there's no Netflix next year with Joey. Who so knows? So Joey's like Netflix is net, Netflix is like this. Sorry, Joey. There's no con competition. We don't have any need for you next year. So now he goes back to Nathan's, and Nathan's goes, oh, no, we don't want you anymore. Yeah, of course they want Or maybe him. they do. I don't know. Do they want him now? Yeah, of course. They He's want the biggest him name in hot dog eating. Who wouldn't want that? At what point? How old is he? When does that end? I don't Why know. are we still talking about I don't know. This? I've tried to change subjects twice already. Uh-oh, my wife's computer is doing something crazy oh, here. Answer it and Hold put on. him on the air. Let's see what happens. No, just, no, no. It's my sister-in-law. My wife's computer's right here. My sister-in-law was... Uh, Ke Kelly, Cheryl wants to FaceTime you. It's, it's unbelievable. There you go. Um, first and foremost, a quick plug for the cast iron griddle that you've oh, recently you. yep. released. Yes. And then Did I, I send have you some... Uh, yeah. You talk about it. I'll go oh, yeah, grab okay. it. It's right over here. You don't have to go grab it. Why is it under the desk? It should be up in the it's fucking not under deck. The desk. It's just right over here. You can throw it in the, in, the, in the kitchen. Talk about it just okay. for one I've second. I've never go seen on. you go, go get anything. Okay, good. Hey, Sam the Cooking Guy, um, listen, if you don't have a grill and you don't have an outside, which is completely legit for a lot of people, you might want to find a way to cook like a smash burger or do a steak and get those good grill marks on it. Good Lord. What's the answer? The answer is the Sam the Cooking Guy flat grill. That Greg has in his hand. It's a ridged on one side. It's flat on the other. Turn, turn it over. Turn it over. There you go. It's got the uh, what's it say there? The catch on the flip side up there. It's got my face on one of Greg's hands. There you go. I see a lot of fingerprints. No, show the other end. There's my face up there, and then it's got the oh, ridge yeah. on the other side. It's see great. That? But just let me tell you, one of the best things to cook on that stupid thing is a grilled cheese. Wait, let me take that back. Is a peanut butter and jelly, a grilled peanut butter and jelly. Build it like you would a regular peanut butter and jelly. Then you either butter or mayo the outside. Then you do it face down on the, the ridged side. You get those good marks. You can turn it 45 degrees, get the hatch uh, marks, and then flip it and do the same thing on their side. It's fantastic. Delicious. Delicious. Let's take a break. Thank you. For from Go ahead. our normal food <sighs> topics. Let me ask you this. If you were going out to eat with another couple that you enjoy spending time with, in your head, yes. just as we're talking right now, in your head, how much time are you allotting to stay there? Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Is that like yeah. the standard if you're going out with somebody, it's two and a half hours? 
Or if you knew you were going with well, somebody I'm just, like... Uh, I'm just a, you're what? I'm just allotting that much time. Yeah. Occasionally, I'll have a um, phone call, FaceTime, Zoom thing with somebody in another country. And, and a lot of those happen late at night because it's regular daytime for them. Right. So let's say we're going out with, we'll, we'll say Jill and Bruno are good friends. If I had a 10 o'clock call in an Asian part of the world, I would say uh, 7 o'clock. We're good. 7 o'clock, the restaurant, we got lots of time. Again, we, give me you know two hours, two and a half hours, still time to come back, get in front of the computer and, and make it happen. Hmm. I think that's what you should allot. Let's, Let's say, say you go to you know you don't uh, look you, you don't drink, but maybe you go sit at the bar for a half an hour first, have a cocktail, take your time, then you go to the table. Nobody's rushing. You got an hour and a half or so, a couple hours. It's all good. Let's say you show up. You don't want to rush. Yeah, go ahead. The other couple already there. Yeah. When yeah. you sit down, they mention that yeah. they have already ordered some apps for the table. You like that? Fuck. Or no, now like has the I don't like that has the feeling like changed? Uh, why are they rushing me? Feelings totally changed. Yeah, I'll tell you this. So a handful of years ago, uh, Kelly's uh, dad, his wife, not my mother-in-law, they're the, the divorced, huh? and some and some family from Canada were in town, and we were told go to this restaurant. At 6 p.m. We show up a few minutes early because Kelly makes me always early. If you're early, you're on time. Yes. If you're on time, you're late. Yep. Right? We all get that. So we were supposed to be there at 6 o'clock. We showed up at 7 to 6, 5 to 6, whatever. We walk to the table. There's one, two, three, four, five people there. And then Kelly and I show up. The table is filled with appetizers. Oh. And I'm like, oh my God, did we screw up? Were we supposed to be here early? And my sister-in-law looks at me, she goes, she says this semi-quietly from my father-in-law. She goes, no, uh, he wanted to come early so he could take advantage of the happy hour <laughs> specials. <laughs> So they got there at five. Yeah. We got there at six. The table was filled with food. Cold. I fucking, I was so mad at that. Mm. I hated every second of the rest of that meal. No, don't pre-order a bunch of shit. Wait till people are there. You want to order something for the table? That's fine. Wait till the table is there. Mm. Wait till, I mean, you, me, Malcolm, Rusty, Doug, we're all there. I show up early and I order a bunch of shit. No, I fuck everybody gets there. What do we feel like? Let's have fun together deciding what we're going to order, what the cocktails are going to be, what the mocktails are going to be for you. That's This is what you do. You do this as a group, as a team, as the people that are there. I don't like this uh, separation shit. No, don't bring that to me. I don't want it. What's your take? on ordering in courses versus ordering all at once. In other words, have you ever kept the menu back so you can refer to it again when you want to order dinner or ultimately dessert? Here's the deal. If I don't, I never order dessert because I don't give a fuck about dessert. If I've never uh, ever? been to the restaurant before, I don't order dessert. Do you, do you, I, do you I eat have dessert never in ordered general? dessert. No, if uh, Kelly and I don't eat dessert, we don't care about dessert. We don't like sweets. Got it. If somebody at the table wants a dessert and they want to order something and they, you know, they bring a, whatever it is, a creme brulee, whatever, some pie thing and a bunch of spoons, I'll definitely have a bite. But Kelly and I go out by ourselves. There's never a dessert on the table hmm. ever. There is no dessert in this house right now. Hmm. We'll have dinner. It's a, uh, 7.30 in San Diego, we'll have dinner by 8 o'clock tonight. That's There's late. no dessert coming out of anywhere. That's when we eat. Wow. <clears throat> have you and Kelly ever yes. 
stayed back to enjoy another dish or cocktail if the other couple has announced no. their intention to leave. No. If it feels the, like the, the end, thing you I've... never said, hey, you know, uh, we're going to stay a little longer. No, because I'm not going to let the evening go by and me be unsatisfied with the amount of food that's come. You know? But, but maybe like, you uh, are like, enjoying there and the other people seem like they want to leave. But you believe it's an agreeing? It, it, no, that has would to be, be an weird. agreement that to would leave. Be, that would be weird to me, using that Bruno and Jill example. Mm. We're all there. Bruno and Jill are like, all right, uh, this has been a fun night. I would never go, all right, we're just going to hang back. We're going to have, you know, slam back some more cocktails and order another dish or two. That wouldn't happen. We're, we're in sync. Hmm. The people that we're going out with are almost never strangers. People will say to me that I know from business or whatever, hey, we should, we should go out. This is, I like this. We, you know, we get along, we should go out. And I'm very comfortable because I'm, I'm 65. Like, here's the deal. The older you get, the more comfortable you are with saying what you feel. Hmm. I will say to people, I love the idea, but to be perfectly honest, we don't have enough time for the people that we're closest to. It's honestly, it's probably not going to happen. Hmm. And I don't think I've ever had anybody look at me and go, what a cunt. Oops, sorry. That's a bad <laughs> I don't think I've had anybody say, um, oh, wait, wait, what? I, they've always said, I totally get it. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for saying, putting it like that. Look, life is short, right? Totally. We have a handful of friends. Yeah. We have a family. Am I going to spend time with somebody that doesn't really, I don't know, uh, mean a whole lot to me? Because we get along for business, doesn't mean I don't like them, <laughs> but it doesn't mean I have to go out and spend time with them. Kelly and I are, are homebodies. We like the house. We like our food. We like to eat, drink here and hang out with the dogs and do that. We go out mostly with our family, a very small handful of friends. That's the reality of it. But we're not, you know, 20. If I was 20, uh, it would be different. You know, Maddie's going to go out with a big group of friends because that's what they do. And occasionally that happens at somebody's house. But generally, I'm being completely straight with you. That's that's how we are. Is there a standard that you operate under as far as picking up the check? Uh, I, I generally do this. If we if I if uh, uh, my manager is Brad. Brad. If I call Brad and go, hey, you and Tammy want to come up for dinner Thursday night? Brad goes, yep, let's do it. I'm buying. I've made the invitation. Uh -huh. With some of our other friends, it's like, should we all go out? Yes, then we, we split it. The cards go on the table and then it gets split from there. Uh, equally, or do you start divvying up the check? No, there's no, the divvying thing is so fucked. So you get oh, one wait. bill, one bill, I and then everybody chicken. throws the card I, and split it up three different but, ways. But, but let me remind you of something. I'm 65. Yes. I, I'm not going to do that. Uh, that game is over for me. You don't tell the waitress separate checks? No. No. Classless. No. It, it, I, so Kelly and I are not big wine drinkers. In this Bruno and Jill example, if Bruno says, we'll have a bottle of the, I don't know, the 72, whatever, Bruno will then say, I just put that on my, on, I'll take care of that. <laughs> because he knows Kelly and I aren't drinking it. Yeah. I'll have tequila something. Kelly will have, you know, whatever she has. And they'll, they'll put that on a separate uh, uh, chit. If it's him. a, if it's like, if the, yeah, if it's a, you know, if they go big on a bottle then then he'll pick that up. Yeah. Wow. But, but no, I don't do, do I give a shit if I had a, an enchilada and the person across from me had a filet? I don't really give a fuck anymore. Mm. I'm 65. The older you get, 
the less that shit is meaningful. <laughs> it really is. And let me just say to your younger uh, listeners, viewers, let that shit be meaningless to you. It doesn't, forget it, forget it. But I do, I just think talking to somebody yesterday, there's some apps now that help you split a check. Yeah, easily. I'm not doing that. I don't care. At the end of the day, if it's an extra $25 for me or an extra $20 for somebody else, we're all okay with that, but we're adults. I mean, I'm not going out for dinner with 20-year-olds. I mean, if I'm going out for dinner with 30-year-olds, they're probably my kids. And yeah, then I'm picking you're up paying anyway. I'm all right with that. What do I want to make I'm for dinner anyway. tomorrow night? What do you want to make for dinner tomorrow night? Can I guess? Yeah, go ahead. Jolly B. I can't, I can't. Oh, the Filipino spaghetti. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Jolly B? Yeah. <laughs> Jolly B. Yeah, yeah. Filipino I've spaghetti. Never heard of that. It's 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 sweet. Well, you know why? Probably because there's not a lot of uh, Filipinos in uh, Cleveland. How could you make such a statement? You have no idea. You have no substance to back that up. Do you have a Jolly B there? Is it a restaurant? There's my statement. Yeah, it's a yeah, chain. That's it's a, a pretty Filipino fast food that's chain. A, uh, what does that it, mean? Yeah, go ahead. It doesn't mean anything. It means could be a lot. We could have put, per capita. We could have a very yeah. large Filipino presence. You don't know. Uh, do you have a Jolly Bee in your town? No, I maybe. Well, the, the, no. Well, if you don't, well, all I'm saying is, if you I don't know, have look. one, look right now. Will you look? Yes. If you don't have one, you don't have a significant Filipino population. You're not putting one. They're not putting one in a city that doesn't have Filipinos. J O L. Do you have any? J O uh, J O L I B E E I B E I B E L E B E. See locations. Here we go. There we go. Cleveland. What are your What is your zip code there? Six five three one. What? what you will you? be happy to know. The nearest one. Times yeah, Square, New York City. Boom. See? Local. There you go. And that's probably not because there's a jillion Filipinos in New York. It's probably because it's Times Square. And uh, it's a novelty. Well, you know what? It does look like maybe a closer one would be in North Detroit. Uh, otherwise, we got to go into Canada to, to get to one. Here, here's what I know. The largest Filipino population... Stalingrad. Outside of the Philippines is is right here where I live in San Diego, California. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, Jolly B, it is, and luckily the video is and by the up way, on the YouTube. And by the way, wait. Yes. Yes. And by the way, some of the best fried chicken I've ever had in my life. Oh, right. I saw that too. They got, they got their shit down. Mm. Boy, do they have their shit down. Yeah, yeah. Three point seven five million people are subscribed to the Sam the Cooking Guy YouTube channel. And you should be doing that if you aren't already. You could be making Jollibee spaghetti tomorrow, which we're suggesting you do. And on the first Tuesday in the second hour, you see this guy right here on the Barbecue Central show. It's saying the cooking guy. Go ahead. You want to leave us with a summary thought or two? Because, yes. Tomorrow's episode on the yes. Sound the Cooking Guy yes. Yes. is uh, – Featuring Duck me Shining. using the me me use, featuring Duck Shine. God, how did you know that? I knew it. You guys Doug, are did you tell him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody! Uh, if he popped out from behind the screen, that would be the if best. If he popped out, oh, you would God. lose your shit. I would cancel would the show immediately. Shit. Wait, 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 wait. Um, is me using the Ray Ban Meta? AI glasses yeah. to cook. Where do you see these things? Uh, Are you in partnership with Meta? Crazy. Yeah, we did a we did a we did a video with you them. You did? It's fantastic. Oh my god. Yeah. I gotta call you. And tomorrow. whatever you think about these kind of glasses, whatever you think about these kind of glasses, you've seen Google Glass and the whatever that shit that was out there for a while and didn't work. Yeah. These are amazing. Wow. Amazing. All right. Yeah. I'm going to call you tomorrow and get a lot more detail. In the meantime, subscribe. Well, to watch the video first. Yeah. Watch the video first. And then I'll call you for, for breakdown. Then call me. And then you will call me and Doug because he'll be here. 
That way I can kill two birds with one stone. This is Sam the Cooking See. Guy. Uh, Thecookingguy.com is the website or shopstcg.com to buy all the cool gear that you could possibly want, including the very new griddle that is just out here. Sam, always appreciate the time. We'll see you again next month. Love you, buddy. Nice seeing you. Love you. I've missed you. Miss you. Sam the Cooking Guy right there. Steve Ray is ready to go talk a little more hot dog. It's been on and off hot dog, but now is the full recap. Before we get to Steve, are you ready to score that perfect 180 on chicken, ribs, pork, or brisket? Big Papa Smokers has you covered for the best rub, sauces, injections in the biz. For a limited time, you can use promo code BBQ Central. That's BBQ Central and get 10% off a Big Papa order. That's right, 10% off the secret ingredients the championship team swear by and win with weekend in and weekend out. Don't miss out on this incredible offer. Whether you're aiming for a grand championship at your next barbecue contest or you're just looking to take your barbecue and grilled food to the next level of awesome. Remember, your food just got better with Big Papa. Offer valid through October 31st. Visit BigPapaSmokers.com and use promo code BBQ Central. Steve Ray is next standby. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpy. Hey, we thank Sam the Cooking Guy for joining us the last segment. This portion of the show being brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. With their latest release, Blue, they have a red coming out soon. One of my favorites is their recently released Black. They have a number of other offerings as well. A fully blown out portfolio of great premium hand-rolled cigars, McAuliffeCigars.com. Follow them on social media as well. The good folks over at McAuliffe Cigars. We're going to have owner Al McAuliffe uh, leading off next month, so looking forward to that. Uh, Helping me close the show tonight is somebody who shares a passion for competitive eating as I do and perhaps a little bit more of a passion than I do with the friends that he's been making recently. He is the owner of Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply and of the historic Steve Ray's Midnight Oil in Ultawa, Tennessee. Steve Ray rejoins the show. Steve, we have a YouTube poll question of the week that we're asking everybody. The best part of last Tuesday's show was Maddie or Becky or Steve or Marley. Where do you land? By far, Maddie and Steve's interview. All right. Maddie and Steve's interview. So 83%. Because you know why? No. You know why? Maddie gave Steve a lifelong lesson in that interview. Oh. They were talking about going to a restaurant last year, and they both ate the same food, and he finished his first, and then but she finished hers next, but she ate the same amount of food, and she took her pen, and she shook it in the camera at Steve, and she said, do you remember what you said? And it hung him up. He said, <laughs> I have no idea. She goes, you don't remember what you said? No. She said, you called me a beast. <laughs> goes, well, well, that's a good thing. It is a good thing, Steve. But let me remind you, or, and let me tell you something. They never forget never forget. anything. No, especially those rampy if, women. If, you, if, if your friends were standing with you in school, and and his friends were there and his friends were talking if you asked him what they said tonight he wouldn't remember no but you would that's right so just remember that steve they never ever forget steve i posted lesson, Maddie. i posted on instagram yesterday after the event unfinished beef on netflix where we had a current reigning champion of joey chet well i guess technically not uh, through every year forever until this past July 4th, a winner of the hot dog eating contest in Brooklyn, that being Joey Chestnut, 
and then a previous uh, thought to be the best before Joey, a Takeru Kobayashi, somehow bringing them together in Las Vegas for a Netflix Live special. I wrote after this event, MLE is D-O-A. After you watch the event, what's your take on the landscape of competitive eating now? It, it was a big event, a huge event. You know, you got to remember, Joey Cheston is still ranked number one by MLE. His, his picture is still on the website. The only problem with that statement, Greg, is Joey has no competition. Kobayashi was his his closest com- competitor. Last time they met was 15 years ago, and and he got smoked 83 to 67. And that was Kobayashi's best effort ever as well. So there's no, you know, who who's he going to eat against? That's the only problem I have with that statement. Um, you know, if we do something next year, Netflix says, hey, we want to have a, um, a 4th of July special, which I think would be great. Well, you, you know, who are we going to do? Are they going to get top five? It's going to be Joey Chestnut, uh, Pat Bertoletti, uh, Nick Weary all down the line there. Are they going to get Nick's uh, wife? Uh, is she going to be in the mix? Are they going to get the top five? The top ten? Hmm? Eater X. Oh, Eater X. Well, he's retired. Oh, I don't even he's know. Old. That he's old. He's 47. I just remember hearing that. He's, Tim Janice is old. He's 47. Is he's Tim Janice is Eater X? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And Matt, Matt Stoney, the guy that uh, beat the three Olympians in the. Uh, chicken wing contest he's not in mle anymore he's on youtube eating food with 16 million people subscribing to him Hmm. so that's the that's the problem i see with that unless somebody uh you know right now pat bertoletti is is number two but you know he's a 50 he's a 50 hot dog uh in 10 minute guy so you know either he's gonna have to get better or joy chest is gonna have to get worse or they're going to have to come up with um, some other sort of um, gimmick to make it interesting. But if they do, then I do think MLE is – I don't think they're in trouble because they do so many small little things throughout the year. Yeah. But as far as a big event that could challenge Nathan's. Now, <laughs> MLE without Joey Chestnut on the 4th of July is not going to sit well with ESPN, Okay. So they, you know, I know they got a contract. I think through twenty nine, but um, you know, there's all kinds of ways to break contracts and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, you know, the, what you know, what do you do then if they come to, if they go to George Shea at MLE and say, hey, you know, we want your guy, and if he's not there, you know, we're going to break the contract. You know, what's he do then? So I think it's going to be a really interesting year. I what, do. what did you think of this event yesterday on the whole? Well produced professionally produced i loved it i loved every i loved every minute of it greg i thought from the uh chicken wing eating contest to the uh gal that ate the uh Le- leah shut shut kiever girl that ate the uh four and a half pounds of uh watermelon in um what was it uh three minutes um then into the main event uh, i thought they were great i thought um the announcers were all were all good uh, Rob Riggle was, was really good. And your boy, uh, Chris Rose was good. Uh, Eater X was good. Uh, I thought, I thought they were all good. I thought they were professional and, um, especially Tim Janice, Eater X, when he, when he mm-hmm. explained when they said, you know, what's he going through, you know, and they kept it as a sport too. A lot of, so many times, you know, people that, that do these guys, they, they want to make fun of them or make fun of the whole thing. And it, it's important to these fellows. They're 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 professionals at what they do, and I thought they were treated like that on the special. I really did. Oh, absolutely! I totally agree. I thought it was a very well produced package. I mean, this was a live event, so obviously there's time metrics that probably nobody that is watching the show is even considering. But I'm watching it, trying to figure out. There were a few times where it looked like they were trying to wrap up this thing or that thing. And then off camera Mm -hmm. wriggles, probably getting a sign like this, like, no, run it out for another 10 seconds or another 15 seconds, Uh, especially right at the end, they were wrapping up and he's like, Oh, any final thoughts, but they had already 
kind of done that wrap up. So just little things that I'm picking up on. But live show, running a live show is much different than doing something in long form than being able to edit down into a nice 60 minute finished package. Between the two other eats that we had talked about, you had Stoney doing the wing contest against the Olympians, and then you had the lady doing the watermelon. Which one did you like best between those two? Uh, the wing contest. Uh, those three guys, um, two of them were, uh, you know, the one guy was, was a water polo guy. The other guy was a swimmer. And the guy in the middle was a uh, former Olympian who's got like 12 medals. Yeah, Ryan Lochte. He competed in like four. You never heard of him? Yeah. He, uh, yeah, I've heard of him. I just didn't remember his name. But, I mean, he's pretty strong. He was, um, oh, what's his name's nemesis? Uh, Michael Phelps. The other great swimmer. Yeah, yeah, his nemesis. So, uh, <laughs> and, but, you know, Matt Stoney. He was the last guy that beat Joey Chestnut in 2015 at Nathan's. So there you had the guy that, you know, took took Joey Chestnut down. So, and in he's eating dogs? against these three guys. And he, it, yes. Yeah, 2015 at Nathan's. He beat Joey Chestnut that year in hot dogs. Was that Joey Chestnut's so that's first what was year? First, like, no, Joey Chestnut's first year was 08 or 09. Wow. And he won everything up to then, and then he won everything up until – this year when he was expelled. So he, it, you know, it was been, it's been 15 years since he and Kobayashi squared off. So that's what, that's what made this so unique. But you know, Matt Stone, he ate 53 chicken wings. And I don't know if you saw those chicken wings. They were yeah. huge. And he had like a whole like method eagle. to, I don't know what you even call it. Mm-hmm. De bone or de meat, the, the meat off the bone. It was like a whole, Almost like he was racking uh, the slide of a semi-automatic pistol, and those other guys were just floundering. Yeah, I, wish could, I wish, I wish you could have asked Malcolm about that because, that, you know, we cook a lot of wings and sell them. And there's ways that these guys they take the wing and they can bang it on the table, and then they twist it, and every bit of meat comes off of it, and then they they eat them like that. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive. I can't do it, but uh, Matt Stoney can do it. And uh, you know the other three, the other three guys combined only ate thirty six. Yeah, pathetic. so uh, fifty three to thirty six, that's pretty strong. So you know they had great. And this gal, the, the gal that ate the watermelon, wow, yeah, she got like thirty three uh, Guinness World Records, and I thought that was so fantastic. They had the uh, lady from Guinness who looked like my librarian yeah. at Farragut High School back in nineteen seventy seven, and she, uh, you know, she, she took her time, weighed everything, and then she made the proclamation, and uh, you know, everybody was like, "Wow, wow, wow!" She could have eaten great. another so, so cool. section and a half, I thought. Oh yeah, she was she was done like twelve in twelve seconds. I mean, she had twelve seconds left on the clock or something so like I that. So I guess the so they just didn't so the feed they just didn't is, give her enough watermelon. You um. Oh, well, so I took it as they they were going to break the record. Like, they set out enough to make sure she broke the record. Uh, but if she consumed yeah. everything, then, like, that was it. And then she had to wait for the time elapse. And now she's the newest record holder at that time. So she couldn't eat more, I guess. I don't I don't know what the deal was. Or maybe they didn't expect her to eat well, that she much. Had, she had three minutes. She had three minutes. So she finished them in, what, two two minutes, 50 seconds, something like that. Uh, they probably she could have had another sliver out there and kept eating, I guess, or she may have just said, "Put out, put out four, and that'll be enough." That, you know, that's all I can handle. Wow! But I'll try to handle it. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, but I thought the whole, the whole thing was great. Yeah, I thought, thought, thought the whole thing was great. That was great. And you notice they didn't shake hands at the end either. Uh, you know, I talked to Pat Bertoletti, who's uh, Joey's real close friend, and uh, he said that the the angst between the two is more on Kobayashi's. And then is on Joey Chester because Joey, Joey at one time called Kobayashi a liar, and apparently, apparently Joey tried to apologize for that, but Kobayashi didn't accept it and never forgot it. So he says it comes more from Kobayashi's end than than Joey Chester. Well, I think end. Kobayashi would be more tolerable of Joey Chestnut if he could continue to get over on him when it comes to the eating. But you have a a uh, yeah. perceived slight from Joey Chestnut. And oh, by the way, he's kicking your ass every single year in the event everybody want to see you win and you were winning it right along and now all of a sudden you're second fiddle. And by the way, he's much better than you and has routinely been much better than you. It's probably not making anything sweeter on his end to want to come around. And I thought 
there was a very outside chance when they were all coming together before things were officially announced that you might have seen a handshake or some type of an acknowledgement from either of them. But it was as stone cold as it gets. Like UFC fighters uh, have no problem going over and hugging it out after somebody caves another guy's face in. And these guys are just eating right. hot dogs, and they couldn't have turned back to back and get off that stage fast enough away from each other. Right. He just uh, Kobayashi kind of turned his back, uh, looked towards his looked towards his wife, who's uh, let's see, her name is Maggie James, and she she handles him too, as far as management, and um, you know basically you know works his business for him, and uh, she may be, she may be part of it too. She may not want any parts of. Joey Cheston as well, you know, and he's out. So, like, uh, he's done. He yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no where he. Where can he go? You know, where can he go? He's at a sixty. I mean, at sixty-seven hot dogs. He's uh, compared to Joey Cheston. He's not even in his league now. He's a Nobody's solid in second league. place. <laughs> so yeah, I would say that unless unless somebody else can can put a run together. Uh, you know, I thought the. Uh, what Joey Chester said about the hot dogs in a bun, uh, you know, they, you know, they usually eat them, you know, they usually eat the hot dog and while they're eating the hot dog, they've got the bun, they're dipping it in water and then they throw it in, but they had to do them both at the same time. And, uh, I thought that I really thought I told, I told, uh, my daughter and her husband when they came over, I said, that'll probably knock this thing down into the fifties or low sixties. And boy, was I wrong? He yeah. said, he said, "Man, that's the way he's gonna he's gonna eat them for now." So, you know, he he, he discovered something himself. Any insight? And as, you know, as, you know what they ate, don't you? You know what they ate, don't you? They ate ballpark all beef franks, huh? and guess what the bun was? Walmart great value buns. Really? <laughs> that's what they used. Wow! Ballpark beef franks and and great value buns. Any idea what it took to get these guys to? come together from a financial perspective? I know there was $100,000 on the line to win, but there had to have been additional money to, to make this happen. I I don't know the amount, but um, I could see, you know, I'm sure they, I'm sure, um, especially with Kobayashi, expenses were probably paid to get him there. His, uh, you know, room and board were probably put up. And I'm sure he got something for, for coming or he wouldn't have come, come out of retirement. You know, he's been, you know, he's been out of this thing, since uh, 2009, I mean, he hasn't done anything, and um, you know that's that's quite a that's a, quite a long time. And he still was still was able to do 67. I thought it was pretty impressive. Was he set up for but, failure um, since he's been out that long? Then, um, I think he's I think he's pretty rich. I think I think they invested their money well, and um, I think he's doing okay. I don't I don't, I don't I've never heard. You know, just reading, you know, like everybody else, reading online, reading the internet is never, you know, he, you know, you never saw an article about him going to the bank trying to borrow money. No, no, no. Bank. I mean, like, uh, since he had been off for so long, do you think he was set up to fail in the competition? Like, he wasn't actively eating. Like, Joey actively eats multiple times through the year and then obviously does oh, no. the hot dog. Well, well, he practiced. Uh, no, he practiced. You know, he practiced. He ate a lot of hot dogs, but so did so did Joey. Pat Pat said that he helped um, Joey on Friday. Did did a practice run. So I mean, the contest was Monday, and there's and he was practicing on Friday. How much was he eating on a Friday leading into Monday? He didn't say. He didn't tell me. Wow. But I'm, I mean, it's a bunch. I know Pat said Pat said when he practices, he you know they make you know make sixty hot dogs, and he just goes at it. Tries to get it done. I don't know if they did that many that close. I don't know what their routine is, but uh, they practice pretty much up to the day. For the because I know Pat says Pat says you know he'll eat a he'll eat a pizza before the night before he he competes. Wow. So uh, apparently they get they got a method for the success that it was. Is it more likely that this was a one and done or? Could you potentially see? You, you've made a lot of great points. The most notable point: there's nobody even in Joey Chestnut's realm. It's not like Joey has a chance of spraining an ankle or pulling a hammy during the action, where an injury causes him to falter. Somebody can come over the top and win it. Even um, it's it's him, and there's nobody close. 
So does this really effectively it's, eliminate a follow-up and making this become something other than what this was, was just a, a one-off exhibition? The only thing I can think of right off the top of my head is that they change what they eat. If they, you know, because Joey Chestnut doesn't always win at other contests. He's just the greatest hot dog eater. But I know Pat, Pat holds the world record of eating um, um, Waffle House waffles. Uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of crazy records out there. They may have uh, uh, another another um, crystal eating contest. They may have another White Castle for, for everybody up north. Uh, you know, waffles. They might do beets. Uh, Pat, Pat, Pat owns the uh, most beets ever eaten record, if you can believe that. Wow. So, you know, there, there's all sorts of different foods they can throw at them. And they used to have those crazy shows that, that they were they were all in back in the – Back in the early two thousands, in the kind of the heyday, they were eating. They ate brains one time. It's mm. disgusting, but um, you know they're kind of making them eat weird things. Back when they were just, they were kind of treating it as a circus act. But uh, I think they could do it with changing foods. I think I really do think I really do think the Fourth of July may may intrigue him. And I asked Pat about it, and he said nothing was nothing was said, but it was the hope. That something might come along, uh, because the, when they saw everybody else sees a hundred thousand dollar purse, and they're out there eating like uh, 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 Nathan's paid ten thousand dollars for the winner. Uh, a lot of these contests have a purse of uh, you know seventy five hundred total, yeah, uh, thirty five hundred dollars total. You know they're like almost like barbecue contests. The purses are real small for what you have to go through. Um, you know, when they saw that big number, they all got it. They it got everybody's attention. And, um, you know, maybe they could have a, a $250,000 um, uh, 4th of July picnic eating contest or something and eat, uh, you know, you got to eat burgers and, and chicken wings and hot dogs, maybe make a combo, something like that. We've, I think that'd be interesting and get the top five of the MLE. We steal them from, and then, then Nathan's done have. No doubt. We've, Broken it down for you. I know that's what everybody was looking forward to tonight. Out of all the great guests, they were waiting all the way to the end to listen to Steve <laughs> and I break down the unfinished beef between Joey Chestnut and Takeru Kobayashi. Steve, appreciate the insight and uh, continued success over at Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ultawa, Tennessee. You bet. Good seeing you, Greg. You too. Steve Ray right there, our pal. Helping me close it out here this evening. So if you haven't seen it, but you listened to our conversation here, uh, obviously, spoiler alert, but worth the watch. I told Bobby the whole deal when she called me in advance of the show, and I said, just go right through to the last 10 minutes, watch it. And if you're not overly horrified, then watch the girl eat watermelon. And then if you're still okay, then watch the guy eat chicken wings. That was the most gross to me. I mean, the hot dog eating was gross, but magical in a way, a magic grossness, not just a straight grossness like the chicken wings was for me. So that's our pal Steve Ray, and we are going to put an end to the show here tonight, a little over. That's fine. We had a lot to talk about here this evening. All the way back in the first hour, Malcolm Reed joined us, of course, as he always does, first Tuesday of the month, 14 past the first hour. HowToBarbecueRight.com, his website. You can subscribe to him on YouTube. You can listen to his podcast. And then after Malcolm Reed, Jess Priles was on the show, JessPriles.com, HardcoreCarnivore.com. And the big exclusive announcement on this show is that in 20 days on the 23rd of September, the first season of her show, Hardcore Carnivore, will make its debut on Outdoor Channel, so look for that. By the way, she's in the midst of shooting Season 2, already greenlit. How about that? Second hour, Sam the Cooking Guy rejoined the show. Great to have him back. We talked about some cooking stuff. We talked about some restaurant stuff. That was fun. And then closing it out with Steve Ray from Midnight Oil and from Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Wultawa, Tennessee. Owlsnestbbq.com is Steve's website on the supply side. And we broke down the Joey Chestnut Kobayashi eating, uh, hot dog eating contest yesterday. 
Big show planned for you next week. Beathead is in. Robert Moss once again. A host of others, not to mention Mike McLeod from World Food Championship. So how do I always leave? September 11th, 2001. This is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe, saying... Shabba! This is Maddie Rempe from Cleveland, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central.